In the last week's video, we have predicted the group stage results for the AFC Asian Cup this year, and now let's head on to the knockout stage. Just a quick reminder, if you would like to know how those 16 teams qualifying to the knockout stage are chosen, feel free to go back and view the video below. Before we start, I would like you to like and subscribe for this uh, video and YouTube channel. And once this video reaches 2,000 views or 75 likes, similar to last week, we will have a new video next week. The first match of round of 16 will feature China and United Arab Emirates, who is the semi-finalist in both 2015 and 2019. The main problem of China PR actually comes from the midfielders in their team. Based on what I see from their match opening match against Tajikistan, the midfielders lack both the ability to help creating opportunities for forwards to score or helping the defenders to avoid Tajiki players from scoring. They are also lacking a proper tactic on what they should aim for throughout the game. To be honest, I feel like even if you replace those defenders with chickens, the results will actually not change that much. To win the United Arab Emirates, the decisive factor actually comes whether they could limit Ali Macbeth's performance, as the team highly relies on his performance to score. Considering China PR's midfielder's awful performance during the first game, I don't think they actually have the ability to limit him from scoring for the team. In terms of China PR scoring, they did have some good scores, but those scores are often famous for missing crucial opportunities and they are highly reliant on the opportunities that midfielders created during, during their performance in the domestic league leagues and international matches. This, combined with the fact that the midfielders in China PR cannot pro provide forwards with the opportunity to score, would make it very difficult for them to score even a single goal against UAE. Furthermore, China PR also suffers from a string of incidents recently. For example, they experienced a string of friendly losses, including the recent loss to Hong Kong 1-2. For another example, they are also are currently undergoing a football scandal with the executives of their association and even the former manager of China PR is arrested. So this could negatively overshadow the performance of them as well. The only advantage they have is their historical head-to-head -head records against United Arab Emirates. For example, uh, we, ha we did have a 5-0 victory against UAE in 1984, and we did have a 3-0 win against UAE in 2022 World, Qual World Cup Qualifier, which puts China into their first intimacy of a World Cup. However, considering that the last match uh, between China and UAE is already 20 years ago, I think it's in 2004, a friendly between them, which ends up like China get, which the result ends up being like China 2, United Arab Emirates 2. So it's a tie. Um, and considering the fact that UAE did innovate their style of play during the 2010s due to bad performance, such as the loss of Vietnam in 27, uh, Asian Cup, which we later call it as a miracle of Hanoi. Um, China PR's performance did, act did not actually translate to success. China PR's past performance will not be able to translate to success in this specific game. So overall, I believe this game would actually turn into a massacre against like China PR national team, in which the United Arab Emirates are very likely to win with a big margin, like 3-0 or even 4-0. The second match will feature Japan and Jordan. In the 2010s, J Jordan did have a golden generation that brings the nation with honorable results, such as qualifying to the Intercontinental Playoff in the 2014 World Cup Qualifier. Even though, to be honest, I think Uzbekistan deserves it more because they actually perform like, better in, the, in their group during the final round than the Jordan. I remember there are only two goal differences away from getting a second place, like which South Korea takes it, while Jordan is like literally far off from the far off from the second place. I think it's like six or seven points difference. Um, and defeating Australia in 2018 World Cup qualifier and defeating Australia again in 2019 Asian Cup. <laughs> Unfortunately, follow the retirement of those players, the newer generation of Jordan did not have the same level of uh, or skill compared to the golden generation, and thus causing the team to decline. 
In the past World Cup qualifier, they tied Kuwait twice while getting massacred by Australia twice. And in the recent World Cup qualifier, they even like tied Tajikistan, who is not considered to be a strong team in Asia. Compared to Jordan, Japan is actually a rising team with many talented players playing in top European countries like uh, France. Japan also demonstrated their strong scoring ability in the recent game against decent or even top tied opponent, such as 4-1 against Germany, which caused the Germany's manager to be sacked, and 5-0 against Syria, which who is also considered to be a like second tier team in Asia. Like having the same Syria is actually considered a team to be like similar to Uzbekistan or like Iraq or something, like second tier. Therefore, similar to the previous one, this game is actually going to be a massacre again. Well, Japan wins Sar- Sar- uh, Japan wins Jordan with a large margin of goals. I was actually predicted to be five to two, like Japan gets five goals, Jordan gets two goals, and Japan wins. The third one features Australia versus Vietnam. Uh, I would have to say that Vietnam did have many improvements recently. For example, they tied Japan. In the recent, in the last previous World Cup qualifier, and they in the this Asian Cup they like get four. They scored two goals, uh, to uh during their match against Japan. Even though they conceded four, but I would say like what if as long like scoring two goals against one of the Asian powerhouses is definitely considered to be a very good achievement, right? The main. However, the main problem of Vietnam are almost all Southeast Asian teams like Indonesia, Thailand, Philippines, is that Philippines is that their physical strengths are relatively inferior to many other countries. If you look at the average height of the twenty four teams in the FC Asian Cup, Vietnam is the、uh, ranks twenty fourth, while Australia ranks top ten. So you can definitely clearly see the. A、difference of the physical strengths between Australia and Vietnam. This disadvantage, this disadvantage is specifically concerning when they are facing Australia, as Australia's playing style is famous for its raw physicalities. And as a result, Vietnam could only rely on their personal skills, such as moves, dribbling, and juggling, to counter such disadvantages. When they are facing teams with only raw physicalities, such as China, P, and Jordan, they could win the game. But when they are facing Australia, who is also not bad at those personal skills, like passing players, Vietnam is actually going to have a hard time trying to win Australia. So overall, I would say Australia are more likely to win Vietnam. I would say with a score of two to zero, Australia two, Vietnam zero. The fourth one featuring Saudi Arabia and Bahrain. Uh, the problem of Bahrain is their consi- incon. The main problem of Bahrain is their inconsistency. You could see the same team losing to Chinese Taipei during the Asian Cup qualifier, while taking South Korea to extra time during the pre- previous Asian Cup knockout stage. So I b- believe that if Bahrain performs very well, they actually have the potential to eliminate Saudis. Furthermore, Bahrain actually has a very good goalkeeper called Syed Jaffer, and with a good forward called Mahum. Mahum. So even though Saudis are considered to be one of the favorites of this tournament, considering the high potential of Bahrain, I would say I would actually predict Bahrain as winning the game. Fifth one, Iran versus Thailand. Just to give you some of the background knowledge about Asian football before the prediction, since the nineteen nineties, the tactics in West Asia is divided into two style: the style that focuses on draw physicalities and the style focuses on personal skills. For all teams using the second style, the leading powerhouse is the Saudis, while the first style, Iran, is the leading team. So they are actually like the, in terms of using raw physicalities, Iran is actually the best team in Asia. So, like, and that is something that Thailand or all Southeast Asian countries is not good at. Furthermore, given that Iranian squad is significantly taller than the Thailand squad. Iranian squad is actually ranked the first among the twenty fourth team, while Thailand actually ranks the second last, only better than Vietnam. They could oh, they could also use headers, in which Thailand is not actually good at all. You know you know why header is effective when facing against Thailand. Back in the two thousand, like if you look at 
I'm I'm going to make an example of China PR again. Like if if China PR is playing against Thailand today, it's definitely they are definitely not having advantages at all. But in the early 21st century, they are just having like significant advantages. Every time China PR plays against Thailand, it's always a large margin of victory, three to zero or like even five five to one. Like China scores five goals while Thailand scores one and. In the twenty, I think it's twenty o eleven Thailand Kings Cup. This is because that China did have like some players who is like who is famous for its raw physicality and they are tall. And furthermore, they can they can run very fast. There's actually players that can like run, like run a hundred meters in around ten seconds. So in this case, they could just use when they are fa- when we are facing. Thailand or a Vietnam or all so- other Southeast nations. What we can do is that we can just use headers. We use we our midfielders kick the ball to the forwards and our forwards use this header to score. And that tactic is so effective in the early 21st century against the Southeast Asian Asian teams. <laughs> okay, never mind. Let's go back to the topic. Um Given that the Ira- uh, and then therefore I believe that the given the Iranian play in style, Iran's playing style just naturally counters Thailand. I believe Iran is going to win the game easily. The sixth one features South Korea and Iraq. Iraq is actually a team that's recently improving, but their like I feel like their overall skill is in, a bit insufficient compared to the South Korea squad. So furthermore. Uh, South Korea definitely have some good players which could single-handedly carry the team such that they could gain their victory. On the other hand, uh, South Korea and Iraq are famous for scoring a lot of goals, so the result of the match would actually be both sides scoring a lot of goals, which is quite interesting. I mean, quite exciting. So therefore, I would actually predict the game to be 3-2. Uh, South Korea 3, Iraq 2. 7th one, Hong Kong vs. Qatar. Hong Kong is actually a team that's famous for very, playing very defensively. So therefore, to reach the, like, a few years ago, the, the most common tactic that they would use is, like, with, is that they are going to include five defenders in the, five defenders. Like, in the tactic, in the playing style of, playing formation of 5-3-2 or 5 for one I think they did innovate their, playing style a bit recently, but playing defensively is still one of the main tactics that they will use when facing stronger teams. To reach this aim, they will they will need to have good good goalkeepers and strong defenders who can avoid the opponent's scoring goals. They have in the past they have Yap Hong Fai and Fan Tri Yap. The first one is famous for tying China PR twice during the World Cup qualifier 2018, which he's the captain of the Hong Kong at that match. While the second one is famous for tying Uzbekistan twice during uh, 2007 Asian Cup qualifier, uh, who is like 100, more than 100 places better than Hong Kong at that time during the 27 Asian Cup qualifi- qualification. For defenders, they normalize uh, foreign players who are very strong. And that is the key to avoid them not losing any goals. However, one major advantage of Qatar is that they actually played against Hong Kong twice. So they are more familiar with how to break uh, the defense of Hong Kong created based on their previous performance. I remember that Hong- Qatar, when Qatar played against Hong Kong, they did win both games. In the Hong Kong government stadium, I think I think it's that stadium, um, Qatar won 3-2. to two. And in the Qatar stadium, they win 2-0. to zero. So it's an aggregate of 5-2. to two. Furthermore, I feel like Hong Kong is just naturally not good at playing any against any like golf teams. I checked the head-to-head records between the Hong Kong and the golf teams in excluding the non-friendly games, and the re- which in this case only includes Asian Cup qualifiers, World Cup qualifiers, and Asian Cup. And the result is that in the past, I think they, I think they have never won a golf team after 1994 to be honest the last time they won a golf team is 1994 world cup qualifier first round against Lebanon. and 
with between the nineteen ninety four to twenty twenty three, they actually let let me think. They actually lose Iran twice. They lose Iraq twice. They lose Bahrain once and Thai once. They lose Lebanon twice in the Asian Cup qualifier. They lose Qatar twice in the World Cup qualifier. Uh, yeah, World Cup qualifier. They lose United Arab Emirates twice in the 2015 Asian Cup qualifier, which UAE, I think they scored eight goals in total in the two games. And in the 2014 World Cup qualifier, they lose, they lost Saudis twice with an aggregate of zero to eight. And if we like put it forward, I actually don't remember. That's, that's all the matches Hong Kong lost against golf teams I remember for now. Um, so considering the two reasons, Qatar are very likely to win the game, and considering that Hong Kong is good at defense, I would say Qatar win by a small margin. Let's say Qatar two, Hong Kong zero. The eighth one features Uzbekistan and Oman. This is actually a type of game where, where it is very likely that the match will go into the extra time and penalty shootout, because the skill and style of plays between the two teams are just too similar. In this case, the experience that the teams have in the past may become a vital factor on which team win against another. Oman is a ri- recently arising team. In the past World Qualifier, they are just one point away from the continental playoff. However, in terms of the experience and records on international tournaments, they are just inferior compared to those back time. For example, Oman has never reached the quarterfinals of Asian Cup, and the last time they reached the knockout stage of the Asian Cup is actually 2019. And while Uzbekistan already has a four-time streak of getting to the quarterfinals of Asian Cup, which are 2004, 2007, 2011, and 2015. So because of this experience, Uzbekistan are of, of Uzbekistan, I believe they actually have a higher chance of winning the game compared to Oman. Okay, now let's dive into the quarterfinals. The quarterfinals features eight teams. United Arab Emirates, Japan, Australia, Bahrain, Iran, South Korea, Qatar, and Uzbekistan. The first match features Japan and United Arab Emirates. The two teams did have a long history of play against each other. In the 1994 World Cup qualifier, Japan won Arab Emirates uh, once and Thai United Arab Emirates once during the first round, which they ended up as both Japan and UAE all win the remaining six games. Japan had higher points in the first round and thus advanced to the second round. They performed very well in the second round, almost reaching the 94 World Cup for the first time. The match that caused them not to qualify 94 World Cup is quite famous. Uh, Japan 2-2 two to two, uh, Iraq, which we now called it Agony of Doha. In 2015 Asian Cup, UAE eliminated Japan in the quarterfinals of the Asian Cup knockout stage through a penalty shootout. So I remember, and I remember, uh, United Arab Emirates ended up getting third place overall. If you look at the head-to-head records, you could definitely see that Japan and UAE are at similar levels in terms of playing against each other. Both of them winning some games while both of them losing some games. However, as Japan's skill have significantly grown in the past few years, I would say they actually have a higher chance to win the game compared to the United Arab Emirates. The second match features Australia and Bahrain. If you look at their head-to-head records, Bahrain has never won before or even tied Australia in the past 50 years. Even though the last head-to-head game between Australia and Bahrain is already 40 years ago, Given that Australia and Bahrain both declined at similar levels over the 14 years, I believe this head-to-head record is still a good source that predicts who is more likely to win. And both Australia, furthermore, both Australia and uh, uh, Bahrain have some good players. For example, Australia has Lecky, while Bahrain has Mahoum. And I believe in this game, the decisive factor will actually be depending on how well the top or leading player in each team perform. In this case, I believe Australia would have a better chance to win than Bahrain. Australia will win, but only win by a small score. Let's say 1-0, 1-0, or 2-0. Through the personal skills, their forwards have that carries the team. The third match features Iran versus South Korea. 
The two teams have met each other many, many times in the for in the past fifty years, and during those matches, we did see some like exciting and fabulous and classical games. For example, the six to two in the Asian. 1996 Asian game where Ali Dai singly handedly single handedly saved the team, scoring four consecutive games, four consecutive goals during the second half. Um, and the four to three in 2004 Asian Cup where Karami scored four consecutive goals to eliminate the former World Cup semi finalist South Korea. Given that the two teams are at similar levels, it is highly likely that we have to decide which team wins through an extra time followed by a penalty shootout. I believe Iran actually have a higher chance to win than South Korea because they have better head-to-head results. In fact, in the past 12 games, Iran only lost one. Another key thing is that South Korea actually has a bad coach, so Iran will definitely have a higher chance to win than South Korea. Overall, Iran will win, but definitely in a very, very tough manner. The fourth match features Qatar versus Uzbekistan. The style of play between the two teams are actually quite similar, which are fast-paced tempos during the game, the strong and strong physical strengths. One major advantage of Qatar is that they did have players who, who, who single-handedly save the team, Afif and Ali, especially the latter one. During the 2019 Asian Cup, Ali scored nine goals throughout the entire tournament, which is twice more than the second place score in that Asian Cup. He's also the player scoring the most goal in a single Asian Cup edition throughout the entire Asian Cup history. Another factor that we should consider is refereeing, aka as a host nation whether Qatar will use referee to help them win the game and to what extent will they use it. In the 2011 Asian Cup, Qatar did not use referee to help them to win the game during the opening match, and they ended up losing 0-2, which almost put them to the edge of elimination. Considering what was happened in the history in 2011, will Qatar use referee to, like, will Qatar use referee to ensure that they did not get eliminated at quarterfinals, or will they not use that advantage here and instead use it at semifinals against Iran? That is something that you would clearly need to think about. That is something that Qatar would need to clearly think about in order to get a good rank in this Asian Cup. So overall, I believe given the fact that Qatar are the Asian Cup hosts, they are actually likely to eliminate Uzbekistan during the quarterfinals. Heading on to the semifinals, we see Japan and Australia. Japan and Australia met each other for many times, in which the first time they met each other in 1956, where Japan defeated uh, Australia defeated Japan 2 to 0. One thing that I did feel that if you look at the recent trend, Australia is actually de- declining. This is because they don't have gen- good genera- generation that is as good as the 2000 generation that defeated the Uruguay, the Uru- Uruguay during the intercontinental playoff while Japan is definitely a rising team. The trend between the two teams can actually be seen very, can actually be very explicitly visualized by the head-to-head records between the two. In the 2010 World Cup qualifier where Australia joins AFC for the first time, Australia wins Japan once and ties once. In 2014, Australia ties both. In 2018, Australia ties once and loses once. In 2022, Australia loses both. So similar to Similar trends also appear if they if you look at their head-to-head records against other powerhouses like South Korea and Iran. So overall, given such trends, Japan are very likely to win Australia during the semi-finals. The next one is Qatar versus Iran. There's actually not too much to say. In the recent Jordan International Tournament, Iran thrashed Qatar with four completed goals. In terms of skills, Iran are just absolute dominant compared to Qatar. So in this case, I believe Qatar Iran is going to win easily. The finals features Japan and Iran. Again, even though Iran is strong, they are inferior compared to Japan, so I believe that Japan is going to win. Therefore, the predicted winner of the tournament would be Japan. I believe their generation definitely deserves the champion in this tournament. The squads are just so talented, with many players playing top European teams. I believe that as long as they perform to the best of their ability, it should not be difficult for them to win this tournament. Here we come to the end of this video and I hope you have learned a lot. See you next week. Bye-bye.